What's happening, party people? You know what it is. You know what time it is. It's time for Riot Starter TV. It's been a while, but I feel like, uh, you know, it's about that time. And we have, we're in need of analysis. We're in need of um, the OGs to come through and, and, and crush the buildings because we have so many talking heads out here. And oftentimes it's not delivered properly. Um, before I get started, welcome to Riot Starter TV. We are live on Black Power Media. If it's your first time tuning into Black Power Media, we want to thank you all and we want to ask you to uh, continue to support us for those who are here. Uh, hit that subscribe button, hit the like button, hit the share button. We're about to have a historical moment. We're in a historical moment, but uh, in a few minutes, we're going to really get down to get down to get down. Um, before I get started, I want to say that um, a couple different things. I want to say that we are definitely honored and happy for lack of better words to finally have Sundiata Coley home after 49 years uh, being a political prisoner. Of course, we know he was the uh, comrade of Asada Shakur and also uh, Zaid Shakur. Um, and, uh, you know, we, we, we just, you know, it, it's about time for lack of better words. But in other news, um, we're not too happy because we lost uh, Thomas Blood McCrary last week, um, so we definitely want to talk uh, about him. Uh, he was a uh, a BLA comrade. Many of you may remember him from um, a interview we did earlier this year or late last year. I can't even remember. It's kind of we're kind of all over the place right now. But um, you know, he has made his transition, and also we sadly report that uh, Dr. Matulu Shakur is in hospice right now, stage four cancer. Um, he's surrounded with, by family and comrades. So we definitely want to talk about uh, Dr. Matulu Shakur as well. And we want to our, send our prayers up. Of course, the feds aren't interested in him going, in him being released and spending time with his family. Um, many of you know that uh, two weeks ago, we announced that he... Um, that his uh, parole was denied again. And, you know, from there, things have kind of spiraled and went downhill. Uh, Dr. Matula Shakur is a, uh, not only a legend, but he is someone who has inspired us with his work throughout the years. And we're delighted to have one of his comrades on today. Um, we're gonna say two of his comrades, uh, Daruba Ben Wahad and Ajamu Baraka. So, um, Without further ado, I want to bring on my brothers, my comrades, my OGs, because I know that, uh, you know, they're going to do us right. What's happening, brothers? How y'all doing? <clears throat> doing? Doing well, doing well. I mean, sad, sad to hear some of this information, you know, and, 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 and you know, it's really, I mean, the thing we have to remind ourselves uh, is this war that we're in. And the 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 fact that uh, in this backward settler colony uh, that you have a situation where uh, the longest held POWs and pol political prisoners on the planet is here in this country, and it's our folks. I mean, and to show you the cruelty, the barbarity of these of these pigs that uh, our dear brother can't even spend his last few days outside the walls. They want to they, they want to prove a point, you know. So, you know, and this, this is, you know, it's what we're talking about today. This 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 one sided war in sense because of the, you know, what we what we face, you know, in the, in, the, in the latter part of the 1970s and into the 80s, you know, uh, and what we need to do to reverse that. Especially as people are trying to suggest we're gonna uh, d disarm ourselves. No doubt, no doubt. Yeah, and we we gonna definitely talk about that for folks who are just tuning in. We will be talking about the whole situation around uh, these mass shootings, gun control, etc. Um, Daruba, I, I see you in the building. It looks like your your name is covering your your bottom of your face. I don't know if you can adjust the camera a little bit. Oh uh, yeah, yeah. I went, I went. I went hard on the name. Huh? Let me see. Yeah, we, <laughs> we, we, we got you like you uh like you being censored. We want to put the, the censor tape over your mouth today. You know what I'm saying? But um, you know, we definitely gonna um uh, get busy. While you uh um while you uh 
How's that? You good now, man? You had the whole, you had a, uh, had your own banner going for a second. Well, you know, I just, I just want to make sure that when y'all do, when y'all do my tombstone, y'all don't come up with no yik yak shit. <laughs> you know, putting on there, you know. Hey, man. man. <laughs> well, you know, he lived for the breakfast program or some dumb shit. Like that. <laughs> we we won't be saying that. And, and 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 with me hanging with you, we might have double tombstones and shit. So, so they they put me as the breakfast program attendee. But anyway, um, glad to have both of you brothers on board today. Uh, before we get started, definitely Ajamu just laid out uh the 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 meat of the fact that you know they 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 want to you know the one thing that we don't want to do is die behind enemy lines course we're in behind we're behind enemy lines right now but we're in general population right um i know that you are a comrade of uh both uh dr matula shakur and blood mccrary the ruba um and i know that you were a um a co-defendant uh of his wife uh fanny shakur during the whole panther 21 situation can you uh give us some uh first for folks who are not who are underwear, give us some feedback on uh, uh, who Blood was and is to you and to our movement, and then uh, you know at the same time, you know immediately after we can talk about Dr. Shakur. Uh, well, first of all, thanks a lot for having for having us on on your program. Um, give us the opportunity to talk about things a little more, um, you know, more more open fashion. Uh, Blood, you know, um, I, you know, I haven't written anything uh, since Blood passed or <clears throat> commented on it publicly. So this would be my first comment. And um, <clears throat> I just feel that he didn't deserve, um, Blood didn't deserve <clears throat> to go out the way he did in isolation and um, <clears throat> without Without, without the support and love of his comrades. He didn't do that. Ever since I've been involved, ever since I got involved when I came out of prison in 1967, and I got involved in the movement, um, Blood McCrary was always there. He was always on the set. And um, he was always in the mix. <clears throat> when he came home from Vietnam, you know, he immediately began to, to to become involved in in the politics of Black liberation. He was one of the founding members of the New York State chapter of the Black Panther Party. He was there originally. He was there when I joined. Um, Blood was always, it's, it's, it's hard to explain, but Blood was always trying to, to, to reconcile the changing the changing of the guard, so to speak, the changing generations with, with what was happening now. It's 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 just unfortunate that his health and and the way he passed uh, was not celebratory of the life he lived. Um, he was a comrade, he was a close friend, he he was someone I could call up and and and, and kick it with and get a laugh out of him and and, and deal with the reality that we both faced, you know. Um, but then again, you know, blood didn't really, his life didn't, shouldn't have ended in such isolation from his, from those who loved and cared for him. And, and, and that's all I can say right now. I miss him. Um, I'm still, um, I miss him. I miss being able to pick up the phone and call him and, and just sit up there and, kick the willy with him, you know, so, you know, our comrade is gone. Like you said, you know, we've lost our comrades this year. Uh, Brother Ahmed Obafemi passed. Um, we have, you know, like, 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 like sister told me, you know, getting old ain't for punks, you know, <laughs> and, uh, and, you know, I think the hardest part about, um, about, um, becoming a senior citizen, so to speak, or elder, or however you want to characterize it, is watching how your enemy 
how the enemy of our people recirculate and recycle and regurgitate the same the same um divergences and 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 and, and ploys and plots that they did against us and and succeed you know and we we wind up seeing streets named after enemies of the people we wind up with a piece of shit like eric adams who's the mayor in new york you know marching in the israeli day the israeli recognition day parade followed by giuliani and 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 the guardian angels i mean this is like this is enough to make you want to vomit you know and i know ajimu knows what i'm talking about to vit to witness this you know to to be alive and witness it and um, there's nothing there's nothing more more um there's nothing sadder or or more more melancholy or or more uh emotional than to be a revolutionary and your struggle has been defeated has been curtailed and you don't see the victory you know you'd much rather you know be relegated to waving a flag on a, on a stand you know on day you know and standing up with all the ogs in the background as as our victor victorious people's army marched by where we recognize our victory than to sit here and watch the enemies of the sun succeed and <clears throat> and live out their fantasies of oppression and exploitation so i just want to say um you know blood blood will be missed by us personally those who knew him and those who loved him and those who only knew of him you know um you should really understand his life and what he went through um, in Vietnam and to come home and engage in his people's struggle for liberation. Uh, I just wanted you to say that. And I, and I, I agree with everything you said and, and definitely um, my condolences had the opportunity to hang out with him a couple of times uh, uh, with you. Um, and, you know, definitely always good to see warriors i think my only regret along with his passing is that you know as we know when a um when a gorilla dies you know the enemy city should burn you know and i i, and I regret the fact that um that so many of our ogs as you mentioned have been transitioning you mentioned uh baba ahmed over Femi, and then there's og shaka you know what i'm saying and 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 of course, we see Dr. Tulu Shakur is, you know, in hospice right now as well. And, you know, we are we are grateful to see, as I mentioned, Sundiata walk out because, you know, at 85, you know, usually when you get to that particular age, uh, these bastards, you know, they don't even want to they don't even want to release you, as we see with Dr. Tulu Shakur or they do like they did with um, Marilyn Buck or Russell Maroon Schultz and they, they let them out for a limited time before they make their transition. You know, um, I want to, if, if we could get into the meat of it, also um, speak on Dr. Matula Shakur, because I know that you both come up out of uh, the, the New York um, area. I believe you all were part of, both part of the Harlem or the Bronx chapter, is that correct? Or? Uh, no, uh, Matulu, Dr. Matulu Shakur, he was, he was, uh, um, a member of the RNA, right and um, he was a close comrade with with Ikuo Denga and uh, Lumumba Shakur. In fact, they all I think they all basically grew up in the same neighborhood together. Um, and uh, he was in the RNA. He was he was in that infamous shootout in Detroit, where the police raided the RNA convention. You know, and arrested a number of RNA, uh, captured a number of RNA prisoners, and um, there was a campaign to get them out of prison. But Dr. Shakur, um, he and I became closer with with the project, the Think Lincoln project, was when is when um, the uh, the Black Panther Party, the Young Lords, uh, had taken over uh, Lincoln, Lincoln detox uh, drug detoxification center in the South Bronx. And we took it over for over a couple of years, and um, and we trans we transformed it into what we call Think Lincoln, uh, a detox center that didn't use um, that didn't use drugs for detoxification. It used political education instead, 
we we had taken over the center when it first started, and they first started with the um, with the drug, the, the the equivalent of of, of heroin that was being um, used for drug detoxification. I forgot the name of it. Um, uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, it, it'll come back to me. But anyway, we took over that, and Dr. Mutulu Shakur was heavily involved in that um, in that collective, and and out of that collective. He, he he organized, he spun off and organized the acupuncture center in New York. We began to practice acupuncture uh, in the poor and black communities um, and delivering that type of health care services to people who couldn't afford it, to poor people, to black people. And so it was out of Think Lincoln that, that we, first, um, we first emerged, um, we first became closer. And then he founded the COINTELPRO Action Tax Task Force in New York to deal with the counterintelligence, the, the, the fallout from the counterintelligence uh, operations of the 60s by the FBI. So, and that was in the Bronx. And the uh was 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 with him in that in that endeavor. Um, I think that um, it was out of that, um, out of that committee to 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 deal with the COINTELPRO uh, task force that um, that Tupac uh, really became of age in terms of him, in terms of his politics, in terms of his orientation. You know, he was a young kid then. I believe he was he was in he was a teenager. He was in his early teens, and so um, Dr. Shakur had an illustrious career here in New York, um, dealing with. Uh, First, with the Think Lincoln and the detoxification center that we that we that we ran for a couple of years with the Young Lords, and um, and going on to to establish the first all black acupuncture center in New York, and later on the Contel Pro Task Force to fight for the political rights of of incarcerated um, uh, uh, members of our movement. So Dr. Shakur has had um, a long a long track record. Um, in the struggle, in the struggle for black liberation. And again, it's sad that um, that he is undergoing um, the type of the type of captivity and treatment that he's that he's enduring right now as he ages and as um, as as this disease uh, begins to ravage his body. Um, and, 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 and like you pointed out with Russell Schultz, uh, with many of our comrades, you know, they weren't released from prison until they were practically on their deathbed, right. you know. And so Sundiat is fortunate in this sense in that he was able to walk out um, of prison. I'm, I, 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 I haven't talked to him. I, I want to, but I haven't been able to talk to him. But again, you know, blood's passing was kind of was kind of bittersweet. With with the release of Sundiata, um, no doubt. Yeah, that 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 definitely. Uh, you know, yeah. Um, uh, and you mentioned uh, one thing. You mentioned was um, about him being a member of the RNA. I remember talking to uh, Bob Herman Ferguson and E. Lua Ferguson, and you know, may Bob Herman Ferguson's name live and he rise in peace as well. But one of the stories he told me was about how um, during that shootout. Dr. Matulu Shakur was 15. And he actually threw, pushed Baba Herman and uh, Ialua to the floor and covered them while they were shooting inside, shooting at, uh, the police were shooting into the uh, the church. So his bravery, at, even at the age of 15, you know, that, that was something to, uh, that's something to admire. Um, you know, how ironic it is now that we're here today to talk about mass shootings and gun control you know what i'm saying when these are some of the quote unquote charges that they tried to uh, uh put on put on many of our comrades so i want to um uh, maybe uh start with ajamu since um uh, you know uh you know you kind of led the convo around the whole issue like what are your thoughts about right now because i i've hear i'm hearing a whole lot of i'm just gonna i'm just gonna say it real blunt i'm hearing a whole lot of silly shit coming from folks who consider themselves revolutionary when it comes to uh 
you know, taking the guns off the street and, you know, uh, getting rid of body armor and all that. I want to know, Ajama, what's your thoughts on that? <clears throat> I think you characterize it correctly. There's a lot of, of, of not only dumb shit, it's a historical dumb shit. How can you be a self-respecting conscious African who understand anything about the history of this country, who understand anything about the history of our people in relationship to the settler colonial state and talk about disarming our people, especially at this point where this thing is disintegrating, uh, where the ruling class cannot, can no longer rule like it used to, where it's now more and more dependent on force, where before it had a, you know, a combination of force and an ideological control, but because of the, the deepening uh, legitimation crisis, they are more and more dependent on the use of force. And you're going to come to our people and tell our people we need to be disarming. You know, this is part of the confusion that uh, we face with our people actually thinking that they are quote unquote Americans and that captives of America. So there's a very dangerous uh, phenomenon being pushed by uh, not only just black liberals and liberals, but also even some people who would self identify as 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 radi black radicals. Uh, and so we have to be put, we have to push back on that. No matter how it might uh, look to some people, uh, we have to push back. We have to explain why that is uh, suicidal, uh, and hope that uh, uh, the folks who who need to understand really begin to, to understand. I think I think that that Ajumu pointed out something that 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 many of the feedback, much of the feedback that we're hearing on the media and in the social media is um is a historical you know um i think it's very important for us to understand that where we are at right now as a people you know we have not developed any capacity whatsoever to think as a sovereign people in fact that has all been undermined politically by the mainstream parties by the mainstream political uh, culture and so we think of ourselves as victims black people really believe that they're these universal eternal victims and to the point where we have leadership by victimhood. We have, I mean, you've had, like I pointed out to you, George Floyd's parents, uh, uh, relatives, and the relatives of Breonna Taylor, we're in the White House as 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 that piece of shit Joe Biden signed, um, signed a meaningless uh, a police reform, giving the police more money and uh, and 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 more and more assets. They were standing right there while he signed. Right. You know, that's like you know, it's 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 patently. I mean, it's revolting. It, it's it's it's. I'm full of revulsion with the fact that we still think of ourselves as victims, and as we long as we think of ourselves as victims, we're never going to organize our own political uh, uh, party. We're never going to have, be able to 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 offer any type of. Um, a retribution or consequence for ignoring our needs as a, because we're victims. And so we look as victims, we look at the system and society to remedy our victimhood, to somehow give us justice, to somehow, um, uh, you know, ameliorate our oppression. And that's, that's not going to happen. And, and, and the disarming, the use of the issue of gun control after, after um, these, these horrendous mass shootings. I mean, here you had a white kid, 18 years old, goes into an elementary school and fire blasts for you, fourth graders. Fourth graders. Just kills fourth graders. Okay? And then they'll tell you that, you know, they, we need stricter gun control. <clears throat> we need uh, more, more vetting. You know, white supremacy, the white supremacist state created the mindset, created a sick mindset. So the mentality of Americans is unique. You know, this exceptionalism that they talk about is real. You know, you have countries that's awash with weapons, whether it's Iraq or Afghanistan, they're awash with weapons. And you don't hear of any mass shootings going on where somebody just walks into the, and fire blasts everybody, unless it's someone that's put up by the CIA or someone who's in some type of, a quote terrorist organization bent on um, inflicting um, um, uh, harm on the masses of innocent people. So the United States is the only uh, nation that has a problem with 
with with violence on this level. And I think it goes back to the founding of the nation. You know, this is a European settler state. It was founded with the gun. Uh, as I pointed out in the little text I just sent you, you know, there was a saying in the West that um, that God created men, but Samuel Colt made them equal. That's right. So, so, so the worship of the gun and the militarism of the United States go hand in hand with its development as a white supremacist nation state. And, and, and if we lose sight of that fact, we won't understand how sick white supremacy is. Racist Americans, white folks are some sick dogs, man. They are wounded. Seriously, mentally, they believe in their privilege. They believe that 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 their privilege equals civilization. They 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 have went around the world raping and killing and murdering and appropriating other people's lands and property using the gun. The right. United States is the foremost um, uh, a producer of of weaponry in the world. I mean, I think number two might be might be. Um, might be this might be Russia or China, but China has it's Russia. It's Russia. So China has a military that's one fifth the size in, ter in terms of its budget in the U.S. You know, and, and China, I believe, has just opened up its first overseas base uh, this year. The United States has almost a thousand bases around the world. <laughs> bases around the world, military bases around the world, and 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 it, so therefore, any type of of, of of rebellion against this domination and against this hegemony is seen as not being in the United States national interest. And so we see that the United States in, in terms of influencing other governments and influencing other countries, it has it has a policy of, of military diplomacy where along with the diplomatic um, um, handshaking and, and deal making goes goes the military contracts. The military contract contractors in the United States, Teledyne and, and 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 Lockheed Martin and Boeing, they make trillions of dollars a year off of making disposable uh, uh, products. A bomb, a bomb is made to blow up. A bomb is not made to just sit there. And, and you can see now, as we just, just reports coming in from the Ukraine, showing that the stockpile of weapons that the United States had that they sent to the Ukraines is dysfunctional. Much of it doesn't work on the battlefield. Why? Because the batteries ran dead, because it was sitting in the warehouses and sitting in surplus warehouses ready to be sold and given away to countries in conflicts. And finally, I just want to say that just in the U.S. approach to reform, just in, re in, in its approach to government, everything is about war. It's the war on poverty. It's the war on terror. It's the war on crime. Or everything is is, is 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 contextualized with using using the 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 the, the um, illustrations of war, using the rhetoric of war. So the United States is a garrison state. It's a garrison police state, and white men with guns run this country. And and if we think and if we don't think that's the case, get your ass pulled over for a broken stoplight in the middle of Chitlin Switch, Georgia, and see what happens to the monkey ass. So 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 we need to understand what's taking place here. People with guns run this country, and 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 we had looked at our, ourselves even from the bullwhip days as victims. And as Al Jamu pointed out, if if we think that. That gun control is about controlling an ordinary white kid whose family was in the military, who has access to weapons. It's not the case. All of these five, all of these kids that went and bought guns, they bought them legally. Now we do have a problem in the black community with 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 guns in the hands of a political uh, uh, street street kids and, and and thugs. You know, they're like the roving rebel bandits of, 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 of Miles era in the 1920s. They have no politics and they have a gun. And uh and and an and, uh, individual, a black man with a gun and no politics is a goddamn criminal and a thug, you know, as far as I'm concerned. Because the only reason that we should be armed is to protect ourselves, our community and our livelihood. Any other reason to shoot each other because we got to we got to get strapped because some knucklehead is in the crypts and another knucklehead is in the bloods. Where did we develop this tribalism this from generation to generation? When I was growing up, you know, gang banging stopped when you was 15 and 16 years old. 
you went on to something else in life, you know? And if you was a gangbang at 18, everybody looked at you like you was some type of retard. You, and it, you know, this dude, man, he's still living out your childhood fantasies, man, running around with your hat on backwards, and, you know, talking about you a gangbanger, come on. You know, but now this has become generational. And, and this has become generational in cities, in urban areas that have not understood that their condition is a condition of domestic colonization. That the white supremacy has colonized us into apartheid like bandu stands in cities where we have absolutely no control over the economy, no control over the politics of, that, uh, of, of, of those areas, no control over the, our housing or, or, or the services in those areas. And that's essentially a colonial status. It's a domestic colony. So we really need to understand the relationship between victimhood, law enforcement, and, and, our, and, and our inability to defend and protect ourselves. And, and the role that our youth are playing in this in this matrix. I mean, when you look at the um, the black community, you know, where are the OGs just pulling the young <clears throat> side, you know, pulling their coat to how they need to move in the community? Where are they? You, you know, people are talking about the kids in the in the black community are shooting up each other. They're your children. They are your kids. This, we act like these kids came from the planet Mongo somewhere and got deposited in the community and we ain't got nothing to do with them no more. These are your children. And if your child is out there strapped with a nine, ready to blow somebody's brains out over, over, a, over, a, over a rap song or over a disc, then it's your child. It's you that's responsible for that. Right on, right on. And so I just wanted to say that gun control is not about controlling guns in the white community because there's over 400 billion weapons in the United States by last reports. It's about controlling our access, our legal access to the means to defend ourselves. No doubt. Um, I want to just point out, just point of clarity, uh, the, uh, the, uh, the the shooter in Buffalo was uh, white. The one in um, in uh, Texas supposed to be uh, uh Latino, Mexican, I'm not, not sure. But uh, I just wanted to point that for all uh, the folks that are take that and run with that and say, see, that's why we can't hear what you're saying. You know what I'm saying? We, you know, we well, got more I mean, excuses. But you, if, you look at that, if you look at that school, you know, Uvalde, uh, uh, Rob, Rob, Rob Elementary School, right. it has its own police force. Right. And, and, right. and it's also predominantly Chicano, it's predominantly Latin. Right. And, um, and, and, and therefore, the, 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 the procrastination of law enforcement in, in, in saving the lives of those children and going into that school as soon as possible reflects the attitude that the government and law enforcement has towards Latino people who they believe are migrants and immigrants and don't belong in America. Right. So although everybody's crying about these kids being murdered and, 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 and it's something to, 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 to weep about, the fact of the matter is, is that was a predominantly Chicano school. And the law enforcement response to that school was not the response that we've always heard about in the cases of these mass shootings. So that needs to be investigated. How much did the anti-immigrant and anti-Latino sentiment play in the failure of law enforcement to, bring, to, put, to put down this, gun, this, this gunman in, in an elementary school? How much did it play into how, how they treated these kids in that school? Right on. And, 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 yeah, go ahead, Ajama. I'm sorry. Well, and, and your question, your question and the response, you know, it, it, it speaks to the complexities and the realities of white supremacy. That uh, uh, not only do we have a situation where, you know, the the the, the gunman was a a sick um, individual who, who had internalized the white supremacist ideals to the extent that he didn't see any value in the lives of those kids he took. That's a manifestation of white supremacy. The fact that you had the, the decision made by the police force not to uh, jeopardize themselves uh, to go in. At that point, they didn't know who the shooter was, but they did know it was a uh, Latino school. Mm -hmm. uh, another uh, consequence, another manifestation of white supremacy. So this notion that this is not, uh, this can't be then uh, uh, framed as a white supremacist uh, phenomenon uh, I think just speaks to the, the the level of confusion people have when it comes to this concept of white supremacy. This is it's 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 infused with it. 
Right. And, and for clarity, just real quick, I'm with you all the way. And we know that uh, uh, just because a motherfucker speaks Spanish, um, they are a product of colonization anyway, because of the fact that the Spanish are white. We know that they're uh, oppressors as well. I'm pointing out something for someone in the chat. And we are very clear, you know what I'm saying, that it's, it's white supremacy inside out. And we know even when it's quote unquote black on black crime is a direct result of white supremacy. So we want to make sure we clarify that because of the fact that what what uh, Derba was saying a little while ago about, um, you know, being our children and and uh, also folks that are, quote unquote, apolitical, you know, who are thinking that they're exaggerated Americans. They thinking that they are part of this particular system and construct based on being getting the hell beat out of them and, and being beat into a, a Stockholm syndrome type state where it is you identifying with your press and actually thinking that you part of the same gang they part of. Um, I wanted to, I wanted to, because, because it's very important because a few things that popped up um, as of late folks been talking about this whole replacement theory. <clears throat> situation, right. And, uh, and, and we already know that it's been, uh, <laughs> it, I mean, these motherfuckers are the number one replacers period. But we also know that, that's been the problem uh, from day one with them being afraid that uh, you're going to take back some shit that never belonged to them, taking back what belongs to you. I want to know your thoughts on that, Ajamo, as far as this whole replacement theory. And, um, you know, give, give us give us some feedback on it. Well, look, the replacement theory is, is connected to this, this, this idea that, uh, number one, that this nation belongs to white folks. Um, and it, it's that idea was there because as uh, brother uh, Daruba said earlier, the way it was in fact founded was based on conquest. It was based on the systematic uh, destruction or attempted genocide on the part of the original inhabitants of this land. So as the, as the U.S. Uh, uh, moved across the, this territory that became the United States of America, shooting, killing, raping people, um, that became part of its ethos. And mm -hmm. this idea now is that this is a white uh, community, white, the white territory. Um, and this replacement theory actually has an international manifestation also. That is the, the idea that uh, that uh, white folks uh, from the U.S., from in Western Europe, have a, uh, a natural right to rule. And that any, any, um, any challenge to that should be faced with maximum uh, violent retaliation. That's why they're so hung up on, for example, the Chinese. You know, they, they understand that they are facing the end of white world supremacy and they can't handle it. So all of these, 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 these behaviors, all of these theories are all connected up with the pathology, the psychopathology of white supremacy. And, and that's what makes them so incredibly dangerous because even though they've been involved in the systematic violence for the, for the last few hundred years, uh, they still have managed to find themselves as to de define themselves as innocent. Okay, is everybody else's fault? So you and you can't reason them with people like that. Only thing you do with people like that is you got to defeat them, and that's why going back to this idea of of this issue around weapons. You know, we had we have talked about the fact that this settler colony, this settler colonial project, this settler colonial society is a sick society because it was based on violence, the glorification of violence. Uh, the 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 and so you know the kind of individuals that are being produced, you know, is a is a logical uh, result of a society that has no real ethical basis besides uh, individuals getting over on each other and violence, and we've got to you know understand that in some kind of way to divest ourselves from that and try to get ourselves clear and sane. But in the process. You know, we have some cleaning up to do in our community also that we're not going to be able to engage in the kind of effective resistance we have to engage in. Uh, as long as we have elements in our communities that basically internalize all of this bullshit and ready to 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 pimp uh, uh, us, pimp each other to kill us in order to get a, a, a piece of the white man's pie. You know, and so those elements have to be dealt with. We try to win folks over to the extent that we can. Uh, and when, and the, when we can't, then we have to be able to uh, to uh, to deal with that and to neutralize those elements. So, you know, again, all of this points to for us as as colonized people, the absolute irrationality of us supporting any kind of notion of of, of demilitarization 
uh, while our enemy is armed to the teeth. And we shouldn't feel bad. We shouldn't have to apologize for that. You know, anybody who tries to uh, advance some kind of moralistic argument around issues of, of violence, these are people who are confused. We are subjected to all kinds of violence every day. Our very existence is the consequence of structural violence. We're not getting our ass kicked directly by the domestic army we call the police. I, I think I think Ajumu, yeah, you, I, you you couldn't sum it up better. The, the the but the malaise of white supremacy is also the blindfold to why they cannot accept their history, why they cannot look at their history. White privilege and white supremacy cannot look objectively at the history and say, "Well, whoa, we did that. That was that was messed up." You know, the descendants of the conquistadores are the same ones that's ruling most of Latin America today. The descendants, the light-skinned descendants, the European-looking descendants of the conquistadores, okay? This is why it's very hard for societies where Africans um, uh, constitute a significant um, uh, number of the population to really get to power in Latin America because of this ingrown uh, uh, history, because of this history of white privilege and the descendants from the conquistadores. The, 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 the whole move into this hemisphere by the European settlers was a white supremacist project, was a white supremacist ideological notion that was attached to Christianity in a, in, 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 by, 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 by umbilical cord. Um, to, it was the Pope, it was one, I forgot which Pope, I forgot, I think it was I forgot which pope who wrote who wrote in the cyclia who wrote a a a um one of those papal decrees saying that anyone that the Europeans, any Christians that the Euro European Christians came across did not have a soul, were not considered children of God, and they could do anything that they wanted to them. And they proceeded to do exactly that. You know, and and so the 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 white supremacy has infected most of the planet whether it's in terms of commerce, economics, politics, or whatever. And, and as Ajimu pointed out, the United States is a garrison state. It's a, it's a European settler state that evolved into a republic. The problem with the electoral college system, as I pointed out to you in a, in a confidential conversation, Kalanji, is that the electoral college system was set up by the property-owning white male class in order to ensure that their property and their wealth would not be seized by the masses of, of ordinary uh, uh, citizens. And we're talking about Europeans now because black folks didn't even have the right to vote, neither did women. So it was about protecting privilege and property. Okay, that's what the electoral college system was created for. This is why uh, um, an individual could win the electoral college system, could win the electoral college uh, uh, vote and become president and lose the popular vote. There's no other dem so-called democracy on the planet where a minority could win, the, uh, uh, could, could, could be a winner and take all the power. Every other society, if, if, if a particular uh, um, a group or party did not um, get a majority or plurality, they had to form a coalition government with those who, um, who, who came behind them or who, or who represented a particular segment of society. Nowhere on the planet is democracy determined by an electoral college system in a winner take all. So Trump coming along when he did uh, only expose the the nature of the electoral college system and 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 how the 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 the, the right wing and the, and the so-called neoconservatives are moving to take control of all local and state politics so that the electoral college system and a minority could control the majority and this goes back to ours to what I was saying earlier that the children that are in the streets in our community, the things that are going wrong in our community are a consequence of the parents of these children, of those of us who are old enough to know better. So all politics is local. So if you let these crackers take over your local community board, if you let these crackers take over your state Senate, you know, it's on you. So you can't complain when you go to the polls and you're gonna talk about, well, we gotta vote for ho instead of hum. You know, we gotta vote for the lesser of two evils in order to keep one evil out, we gotta vote for another one. All of this bullshit is based on the fact that you have not, that black people think like victims. We have not moved in a, in a fashion to empower ourselves locally or nationally. And as long as we do that, the idea and the notion 
of 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 controlling the armed agents of the state and 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 the, and the miscreants that that are on the right who are armed to the teeth. The idea of us defending ourselves against them is a non-starter. We are not ready. We have not been ready, and we're thinking like victims. I, I wanted to just add something real quick on that, in terms of, of how this this the, the violence of this state is 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 baked into the DNA of this settler colonial state. You know, this whole discussion around around uh, guns and, and and the accessibility of guns is all related to uh, the Second Amendment, um, as though the Second Amendment just just was you know some kind of aberration uh, of, with with the Constitution, but that was part of its essence. And the, 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 the issue with the Constitution and the Second Amendment is not even the Second Amendment. The fact of the matter is that in Article 1, uh, Section 8, call, uh, Clause 15, it justifies the existence of militias. Mm -hmm. And what were the militias there for? They were there to basically uh, expand the territorial power of the United States of America. Uh, it gave the, the states the power to, in fact, do that. The, the Second Amendment was the amendment that allowed for individuals to also be part of that process. In fact, in many of the states, as they were expanding across the U.S., you had a responsibility, often a legal responsibility, to be armed to, because the, the, the war was being waged against, first, of course, the indigenous people, but also you had to be dealing with the issue uh, with, uh, with uh, runaway, uh, quote unquote, slaves. You know, and that meant you had to be armed because, of course, uh, in certain parts of U.S. history, uh, white folks were in the minority. So this is baked into the DNA of this country, this kind of, of, of violence and this inability to, to come to terms with it. It's what, again, makes these folks so incredibly dangerous, because when you have people engage in that kind of de uh, denial, um, they are liable to do anything, especially when you confront them with the reality uh, or their own realities. Mm -hmm. Man, you said liable to do anything, and that they do. Um, I want to I want to take it up a little further north, you know, because folks are always talking about how good Canada is and all of this type stuff, and we know that uh, Prime Minister, Prime Minister, Prime Minister, Sinister Prime Minister uh, Justin Trudeau is talking about um, he wants to uh, implement a national freeze uh on guns uh he said basically they want to buy back quote unquote automatic weapons by the end of the year uh, they also want to ban weapons that look like uh you know uh replica guns toy guns and he said that if you already have a firearm uh handgun or whatever then you know it's cool you can keep it i want to know uh what's your all thoughts on that we're talking about you know and he said uh and I'm paraphrasing, one of the other things he said was that uh, we see what's happening south of the border um, as if things are better. So we're talking about uh, a country that is about 300 million, uh, has, has about 300 million people less than that of the United States and far more gun violence, of course, already, because I think uh, they said something to the fact that over 7,000 something folks were murdered here in the States with uh by use of firearm and only 200 and um, I believe 40 something was killed by firearms in uh, in, in in Canada. Um, I, w I wanted to know you all's thoughts on that. Well, um, Canada doesn't doesn't have um, a, a problem of mass shootings. Canada has a, a slightly different history, although this colonial settler state too. Canada has a slightly different history. And, um, and that history is baked in to the how the revolution proceeded in the U.S., how um, how native how native people were forced out of their lands, many of them migrating to Canada, you know, to get away from the European settlers in in uh, in in the lower forties in the in 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 these states. Uh, Canada doesn't have the same type of macro dynamics as the United States does, you know, um, and so you know. Trudeau was just talking out his ass. 
He's just responding to to the to the popular sentiment and the horror of 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 dozens of of, of babies being slaughtered and murdered in school. And and he wants to reassure the Canadian people that, you know, this ain't gonna happen here. You know, we're going to do this and we're going to do that. But Canada is, you know, they 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 don't I mean, just the statistics tells you that they don't have a shoot a, a, a problem of mass shooters, and 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 people just going buck wild with an automatic weapon in 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 public. Um, so, I think that that Trudeau is basically, uh, you know, trying to throw some shade on the politicians in the United States, and uh, and claim that Canada, you know, is going to move to prevent any of these things happening. But Canadian history is, is, is different than the history in the United States. And therefore white supremacy manifests itself slightly different there. Um, you have a French speaking population. You have, um, you have a, a vast territory that, that, that stretches almost to the, uh, to the, uh, to the Arctic circle. You know, it's a whole different scene uh, uh, there. You know, um, you have a, a more vast rural population than you do here in in the U.S. And so colonialism, the European settler state there was probably European settler 2.0, you know, the U.S., you know. Yeah, I, I would add to basically this is we can't take this is not a serious conversation that he's trying to advance. I mean, you know, is is a, a sort of a one upsman uh, kind of moral superiority thing. Right. But what 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 combines uh, Canada with the U.S. is that uh, even with their sanctimonious uh, bullshit uh, legislation, they, they 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 float now. They still with the U.S. still with Western Europeans, and uh, advance the, a militarized foreign policy. You know they are still uh, selling weapons to various states. They're still uh, supporting uh, NATO. Um, this is all hypocritical bullshit we see with these Europeans. Where everybody is, is crying uh, uh, crocodile tears about the uh, gun violence in the U.S., you know, where's the opposition to the transfer of $7.4 billion worth of guns uh, to local police forces, okay? They want, they want the, the police to be armed to the teeth in order to control uh, folks like us, you know? Uh, where's the uh, outcry to the uh, $880 billion they want to give uh, to the military again? You know, and where was the resistance to the 40, to the end up being $55 billion that these Europeans are sending uh, to uh, to Ukraine uh, to wage war? You know, and mind you that the, the total uh, Russian military budget is only $61 billion. So these people are, are uh, utter hypocrites. You know, and again, you know, the fact that they can't even see these kinds of contradictions to me is an example of the kind of psychopathology we're talking about, mm -hmm. you know, the, 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 the cognitive dis dissonance that they have, you know, that basically they don't even see that uh, the entire world uh, sees they, they have exposed their asses. They understand everybody understands now that they are pushing straight up white supremacy and white solidarity and the number one. A uh, spokesperson for this this white solidarity movement is uh, the president of Ukraine, Zelensky, who's talking about uh, Europeanness and and the West and Western values and Western civilization. These are all dog whistles, you know. And that's why you see the the, the white folks around the world, you know, and in, in, in Parliament, you know, clapping and at the uh, different uh, you know uh, 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 award ceremonies. They. Zelensky is the white supremacist that we everybody warned that was going to come after Trump. It's easy to mobilize against Trump, but you got a slick white supremacist like Zelensky, and you talk about something very dangerous. So you know these folks are not serious. They want to maintain their global hegemony by any means necessary, and we've got to understand that. Yeah, I mean history shows that the United States, Canada. And all, the, the Canada, the United States, Australia, and Britain have New all been to war on the same side. They've never differed whatsoever. It, uh, 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 Austra Australia, which started out as a penal colony, 
is 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 and 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 is talking about its 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 strategic alliance with the United States against China, the phobia against Asia and against the so-called Chinese hordes is a phobia that has existed in America from its very beginning, from its very beginning. So, we we as African people in the United States and people of color globally understand or should understand that the European hegemony that's that's today is fuel and run from Washington. I mean NATO, NATO. Is, uh, is 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 a historical anachronism. It doesn't need to exist anymore, but it exists because it expands and enhances U.S. control over over Europe and over the European militaries and the European economies. Um, so, the, uh, Zelensky talking about if the uh, West stays stays steadfast, you know, the Ukraine is looking towards the West. The Ukraine has a problematical history with with the so-called Western neighbors. What it was invaded by Poland, was occupied by Poland. There was a movement to throw the Poles out. That movement did, uh, uh, allied itself with the rise of, the, of, of fascism and and, auto, and autocracies. They were allied to the um, to Austrian Hungarian uh, Empire at one time, all seeking national independence. So the Ukraine has a history of of, of entanglement with 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 the imperialist nations, the, um, the the metropoles of imperialism over the last two centuries. And, and it was only under the Soviet Union that it became a Soviet, that it became a state of, 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 of the Soviet Union. And with the collapse of the Soviet Union, the Ukraine got its independence, as did Poland, as did the so-called um, uh, uh, Eastern Bloc nations. And they all marched straight into the European Union and straight into the arms of NATO. You see, right. so so NATO is 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 a front for the United States. It's it's a it's a mechanism by which the United States military industrial complex could produce weapons and distribute weapons and recirculate the debt of these EU nations into into um, into the stock markets of the United States. So um, yes, Ajumu pointed out, you know, these European settler states have always fought together have always rolled together and, and they face a global threat in their eyes. That's why they look at China the way they do. They face this global threat that, that the Belt Initiative Road project is going to is going to create an infrastructure that challenges the hegemony of European uh, post-colonial uh, uh, power, which is basically globalization. Um, so yeah, we need to understand what our role is in this as a people. Here we are, a national minority inside this, and in, 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 inside a garrison, a uh, police state, a state of democratic fascism, where minority controls the majority, where even the oligarchy controls the the political the the, 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 the political writ of the country, and which and, and what are we talking about? We're talking about basketball games. We're talking about. Um, uh, you know, individual entrepreneurs keeping the dollar in the black community and Bitcoins, liberation through Bitcoins. We have all these devices that we're talking about and none of these um, uh, uh, equal the fact that we are thinking as victims. We do not think as a sovereign people and we do not have any political power in this country. And, and what little power that we do have is being gradually stripped away from our communities uh, by these neo fascists and these um, so-called neoconservatives who are taking over local politics and, um, and state politics. Now, the last time I had the two of you on um, was a few months ago. And and, and uh, shout out to Pam Africa. She hit me up the other day and said she had just saw it a couple of days ago. And, and and she was sit, passing it to her family and everything. And, you know, she thought it was live when she saw it. She's like, man, that was a bad motherfucker. So shout out to Pam. I know you probably checking this one out right here. But um, we talked about the whole the last time I had you on the two of you together. We talked about the whole Russia, Ukraine conundrum. Right. From since that time. If, if you were uh, Miss Cleo's nephews or brother in laws, what would be your prediction as to where this thing is going right now? What do we see um, this whole? <laughs> Look at Ajimu's face. <laughs> 
you, you muted, Ajimu. Ajimu. <laughs> you muted, man. Take your mute off. You muted. Because Brother Kalanji is, is dating himself. You you are assuming people understand those references. Hey, to Ms. Man, Cleo. Okay, man. <laughs> they, they, they could Google. We know what time it is. How about that? <laughs> I know, I know you know. Don't you act like you ain't like you don't know. <laughs> no, we, we we definitely know. No, it, it's, it's crazy. It's crazy. Now this, this is, I mean, what 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 you know? We we predicted that basically, you know, we would be where we are today, uh, because basically when they were pushing this notion that uh, Ukraine was going to be able to militarily uh, overwhelm the the Russians, you know, that wasn't going to happen. All it was going to result in was that the Russians were going to have to up the the destruction um and i think what they was what has happened in that country has really been immoral because uh the cynicism of these decisions made by the u.s are to in essence use the ukrainian people uh to advance their own geopolitical interests mm -hmm. which is to weaken russia you know no matter the fact that it's going to destroy it has resulted in ukraine as a nation really being dismembered and the part that's not dismembered uh, it's going to be com it's completely controlled now by the U.S. Uh, U Ukraine, Ukrainian nas nationalism doesn't really exist any longer because uh, the, when they agreed to this land lease uh, thing where they are giving all these weapons and on credit. And mind you, now, this was the, the model they used coming out of World War II, the yes, land sir. lease thing. And the, the Soviet Union, or then the Russian Federation and the Brits just paid off their land lease from World War II. In 2006 that's right so they have basically given away sovereignty to the west so you know it is is incredibly cynical uh and but the fact of the matter is you still got africans who run around talking about uh the russians this the russians that you know ain't nobody taking no sides we say but take a side with your people and so for me and i'm, I'm speaking as an individual you know uh <laughs> There are times where the enemy of my enemy is, in fact, my friend. OK. And so to the extent that that the the uh, uh, NATO is being uh, exposed, uh, that there's cracks in the European in the U European Union, uh, that uh, uh, for the first time uh, you had a state able to with, withstand and to uh, to prevent being destroyed by uh, U.S. and European sanctions uh, to the extent that this is weakening our enemy. I don't know what the issue is. Absolutely. I mean, a lot of folks don't understand now that the sanctions are coming home to roost in terms of inflation, in terms of the U.S. The U.S. doesn't have the ability to replace um, uh, a, a Russian oil and, and gas for another two or three years. So so they're going to freeze. So, 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 so the Europeans are going to freeze this winter. The Ukrainians are going to fight to the last ounce of their blood to the last drop of blood for the European Union and for and for America to weaken to weaken the Soviet to weaken Russia and Russia on the other hand can resist sanctions on this level because Russia basically is a self-producing a, a nation a self-producing country and it has its relationships with India and China and um, uh, uh, intact and so you know, these so-called sanctions, I mean, the U.S. is turning now towards Venezuela on the down low, talking about, look, man, if we lift this oil stuff off, off of y'all, y'all could, could contribute to this. You know, so now they're turning, they, they, they want to turn the spigot back on in Venezuela so that they could help the Ukrainians. Ukrainians. Sanctions have never worked. Sanctions, it, it, if, if we look at the history of sanctions in the post-World post, post -World War II era, sanctions have never resulted in the results that the United States wanted to bring about. It never worked. And um, so sanctions against Russia uh, is a no-go Fargo. Is is it's not it's not going to work. And in fact, it's going to have ramifications for us here in the US. We could see by the price of oil, gasoline right now, it's damn near five dollars at the pump, you know, and it's and it's expected to go to eight and higher, you know. So so the US is um, in order to hold on to its hegemony, in order to so-called weaken Russia, is only undermining and weakening its EU and uh, NATO uh, um, uh, flunkies. And uh, we need to understand too that NATO is in Africa. NATO is 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 it's the North Atlantic Treaty Organization. So I don't know what it's doing in Africa. Last time I looked, Africa wasn't in the North Atlantic, but NATO is in Africa. 
It's working with AFRICOM. It's in the Sahel. It's troops uh, 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 in Djibouti and, and, and in the Horn of Africa. So NATO has it doesn't exist anymore to contain the, quote, so-called threat of the Soviet Union, which is defunct. NATO exists to expand European global hegemony and, and support Europe, European power. And um, and this is why, you know, um, uh, um, these different nations in Eastern Europe want to join NATO because they know that, they're, that they can get under the wing of the United States because the NATO charter uh, uh, empowers any nation that's a, uh, any nation to come to the aid of another NATO uh, a member nation. And um, and this is one of the reasons why the Russians, and as, as Ajibu pointed out, we're not looking to the Russia as 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 our allies and our saviors. Although I I would admit historically that it was the Russians that trained the PAIGC in Africa. It was the Russians that trained the ANC uh, guerrilla forces. It was the Russians that supported Amakar Cabral and the liberation movements in Africa. It wasn't the U.S. It wasn't Britain. It wasn't Portugal. It was the Russians. So if anybody has a historical uh, uh, um, affinity to supporting anyone, it should be us supporting the Russians because they at least helped our struggles in Africa for liberation when it wasn't popular during the height of the Cold War. And so having said that, um, I think that we need to really understand that the U.S. has a, has a, a geopolitical uh, a diplomacy that involves the manufacturing of weapons, the sales of weapons to allies, and and the co-optation of governments and their and their debt into uh, into the U.S. economy. Um, so, uh, I think that we when we look at when we look at, um, at at the Ukraine, we're going to see increasingly an increasingly desperate fascist government in the Ukraine, anxious to pull the United States and um, and its allies into a direct confrontation. Uh, uh, with Russia, and uh, so we it remains to be seen how that's going to play out. I, I would like to ask, um, you know, because we have uh, uh, contradictions upon contradictions, and we know that uh, many of our people out here talking crazy. They, as, as John will mention earlier, about uh, you know, uh, you know, choosing between Russia and the Ukraine, more or less, and 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 you know how the Ukraine is suffering, so on and so forth. And then the whole thing about uh, gun control, and I, I mean they're, they're parroting what what the state is saying, parroting in their, their narrative. Um, why do you think that is? What what's the? And I, I know it's like a rhetorical question, but why do you think that? Uh, or or make the connection? Uh, should I speak? Should I say? And um, what is what is the solution coming from you two in dealing with this propaganda? Well, the mass media, I'm, I'm going to let uh, move jump on this, but I just want to say the mass media here is is uh, defines the parameters of the issue, defines the parameters of the debate, and, and, and it pushes out any type of dissonance and any type of discordant views that don't fit into the parameters of the debate as they defined it. So the mass, I mean, if we look at the U.S. mass media, they were all in, they were all in favor of invading Iraq. They were all in favor of, 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 of the war in Syria. So the mass media here has always functioned in lockstep with the state and with, uh, and with U.S. foreign policies. So it's, I mean, look at the recent expose about Haiti in, uh, in uh, I believe it was the uh, New York Times, I believe, was it the Times or was the Washington Post? It was one of these major I newspapers. Think, I think it was New York Times, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, that showed how the U.S. was in collusion with the French in, in, in impoverishing Haiti and maintaining Haiti's- with The uh, banks and everything, right? Yeah, the yeah. city bank, all of, these, these, all of these things. So the truth won't come out about this um, for another 10 or 15 years. And then everybody's going to be writing editorials talking about how, you know, they was duped by the politicians. You know, they're going to do a mea culpa like they did with the invasion of Iraq that was supposed to be for weapons of mass destruction and no, none were ever found. You know, um, so, so you know, the, the, the media has played and the social media has played a significant role in defining the parameters of this discussion.
So therefore, it's 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 like Black Power Media coming on with you or or Ajamu talking talking outside of the parameters of their construct, you know. Um, and then when you look at how many shares that you get on your program, you have like seventy two shares, you know, like five hundred people listened in. You right, see, right. but when somebody's talking about um, about Smollett, you know, getting you know faking faking a, a, an assault, you know, you got you know, 1.7 million hits, you know, on some dumb shit, you see? And and, and 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 you need to ask yourself, you know, well, why is that more significant and more important? Because we are living in the age of social media in which every, which young people and, and, and many older folks have become somewhat, um, uh, how do you say it, uh, when you when you look at yourself in the mirror and you and you appreciate uh, your your own beauty, uh, <laughs> you know everybody wants to be a star. You know everybody yeah. wants to everybody wants to be on TV in, in, in for a minute. You know and and it's these algorithms of 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 people's desire to be seen and to be heard and and to be uh, listened to that has created this crazy matrix of of, of information disinformation that's going on. You know, back in the old days, what you didn't know didn't hurt you. Now, what you don't know will get your ass killed. So, so ignorance up. ain't bliss. No more. Ignorance ain't bliss no more. You know, so it's it's the media that 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 defines the parameters of the debate. Look at Joy Reid. She'll trot out. She'll trot out somebody from Black history, totally mislabel their role in history, and and use that to reinforce the major dialogue of the state. So, well, let me let me let me jump in, brother. Because I, I'm, I'm unfortunately I might have to jump because I got a another interview to talk about what's happening down here in Colombia at 1:20 on the critical news hour. So if anybody wish y'all leave this, you know, you uh, tell so me about make... Colombia before you bounce too, man. About this about this 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 black candidate that's this this running this leftist that's running and how the right is consolidated uh, um, the one of the one of the right wing candidates got knocked off and he's threw his weight behind this yeah. this this old guy that's talking about he's he's on TikTok and everything. <laughs> well let me just say say first, I mean you, you laid it out in terms of of how the this discourse gets control is controlled by the, the corporate the capitalist media. Uh, so you have corporate capitalist media uh, you have the the big tech, all of them ideologically um, connected uh, with the same kind of, of of program. So they they control, they create and control the narrative. And our our responsibility is trying to figure out how to punch through that. So you you laid it out, my brother. So there's nothing I can really say to that. Real quickly on the Colombian thing, um, yeah, this this is a is a very interesting, very serious kind of thing. Uh, the uh, Gustavo Gustavo. Uh, um, and 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 uh, Francia Marquez um, did not win in the first round, so it has to go to a second round. Um, and there's been a, a so the second and third candidates that came in are combining, uh, and that's taking them over fifty percent. So the struggle now is going to be around turnout, but is a is is a very uh, important kind of shift taking place because as everybody knows, Colombia is seen as the Israel. Of, of South America. And the Biden administration has made uh, a signal saying that basically they're gonna support the right wing if they, if they need to take care of business. Is if uh, Gustavo and Pedro and, and uh, Francia win. Uh, so it's a very dangerous situation we're facing also down here. So I'm gonna get a chance to elaborate a little bit on this in a few minutes, but I really appreciate this, this opportunity again uh, for being here, getting a chance to share this space with uh, a brother who I've always admired. Uh, and who I've always seen uh, as, as as my leader and the leader of our, of our people. So thank you so much, brother Zeruba, and and stay stay strong, stay safe, and and know we we love you, uh, and we're gonna be with you uh, uh, forever. So thank you, Africans. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Right. Thanks for coming on, Ajamu. We'll right. talk to you soon. Appreciate it very much. Yes, too. yes, sir. Yes, sir. So Zeruba, I'm gonna hold you hostage for a good 15 more minutes. You know what I'm saying? If we can do that, uh, you know, and, and and thank you for, uh, you know, for coming on, joining us today. I know you are, uh, you, you you fresh off the, uh, fresh off the, uh, 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 the, the space shuttle. 
you know what I'm saying? And you came to kick it with 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 a with a with a uh, a, a lonely brother like myself with nobody else to talk to me. But um, <laughs> definitely uh, appreciate you you coming through, man. Um, I w- I wanted to know we we gonna get right to it, man. Uh, you know, with all these folks yelling gun control, so on and so forth. What do you feel must be done? What is like in in this hour? You know, the the, the nation of Islam they had the fa- the final call. We we had the final call. You know what 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 must be done right now? Where are we at? You know what is to be done? That's a that, that, I mean, there's a lot of things that should be done, that right. can be done. The thing is that we have limited ourselves. We have painted ourselves into a corner, at a crucial point in time. We have no political party no independent political power. You know, we still have Negroes talking about, you know, that we have to get out and and support the Democrats in in order to avoid the wholesale takeover by the the right and the extreme right and how the extremism on the white supremacy has moved into the mainstream of the Republican Party. It was always in the mainstream of the Republican Party, just as it was in the mainstream of the Democratic Party. I think Malcolm X pointed it out very clearly when he said the difference between the liberal and the conservative is that a liberal would, would go behind your back and, and whisper in your ear and tell and deceive you, whereas the conservatives, and this is in the old days, the conservatives would just come out and, say, and, and call a spade a spade and said, basically, you know, you, you know, you had no rights that they had to respect. And so I think that right now we are confronted with the phenomena of of these Negroes like like this this buffoon in in New York, Eric Adams, and these mayors that we have in Georgia and and in these different states. We're confronted with these Negroes who are part of the Democratic Party's apparatus ap, uh, apparatus who who are in who are in the struggle for their own self-aggrandizement and their own political power and their own political ambition and i think until we really seriously deal with this misleadership class and put them and put them down like like rabid dogs you know we're not going to be able to do anything we're not going to be we, we don't have no political party and we don't have any we don't have any political activists on the on the national scene who are willing to 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 go up against the paradigm of of left and right, uh, a neoliberal and neoconservative politics. Um, we are having our leaders chosen for us. We are being led by victims. I mean, we have the Al Sharptons giving rallies, inviting all of the victims of police brutality to stand up on the stage and 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 cry about how they were deprived um, uh, unjustly of their loved ones, we are led by victims. So until we could develop a movement that's that's an insurgency, that, that at least can take control of our immediate territory where we live, you know, we done, we, we, we dead and stinking. You know, um, power is the ability to define phenomena and make it act in a desired fashion and we don't have no power. And, and, and this is because, you know, we have a Congressional Black Caucus that's renowned only for giving their yearly dinner. You know, that's the only that's the only affair everybody wants to go to is to see Congressional Black Caucus dinner. These are absolutely, absolutely useless Negroes. You know, they're embedded inside the Democratic Party. You know, the Democratic Party does not have our interests at heart, does not have the interests of poor people at heart. Isn't We have no working class unions that to speak of, they've been to completely um, 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 uh, dismembered and weakened. So we don't even have an effective working class movement that could homogenize itself into a, a alternative political party. And we're living in a in in the last days and times of a garrison state of a police state. So I think that over the next two years, I know that. The, 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 the midterm elections are probably going to result in a landslide victory for the uh, for the extreme right. And at 2024, um, they'll be able to implement what they tried to do on June 6 of last year, mm-hmm. you know, and that's to take over uh, overtly the controls of, of the, of the um, executive branch of government. We already know that the corporations control 
the electoral side of government. They already control the um, the courts. They already control the, the 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 political process. Only thing that's left to take over uh, to take over now is 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 the control of of the state by armed agents of the state, by, by the right wing, the complete control, the authoritarian control in which a national, in which a minority of, of, white, um, of white people could control the majority of the United States. And of course their objective, uh, they stated in their replacement theory, they know that the demographics of the United States is going to shift radically in, in the next 10 years. And that, and that they would be, um, they would become a minority. And what, what they don't understand is that the reason for their, for their lack of, 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 of prosperity, for their lack of jobs, for their, for their marginalization is because of the very politicians that they put into power, you see. So they, 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 they unload this on, on migrant populations. And um, it's the same thing is happening in Europe. You know, the U.S. has, 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 um, has said that it, it, it has immediate entry for 100,000 Ukrainians, yet still we remember Haitians being beat back at the border. So, and now yeah. we have the revelation of how the United States participated in, in impoverishing Haiti and, and, and rendering it a failed state. So, I mean, unless we snap out of this and, 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 and put some smack down on these Negroes that are in political power, we need an insurgent movement. We need to get rid of these niggas, man. And that's what they, I mean, we, I mean, seriously, we got to get rid of them through hook or crook, either slap them in the face and kick them in the ass or run them out the community, burn their house down, whatever you got to do. You got to get rid of this boule Negro class because they're a misleadership class. And, and, and as long as they're in power, as long as they're um, hurting us into the Democratic Party, we're in sorry shape. And meanwhile, the right wing is armed to the teeth. They have no problem about coming into our community and murdering us. And we have no control over local law enforcement. We have no control over the community public safety. We have no control over the housing that we are living in. We have no control. We don't even have control over the sanitation department to pick up the garbage in the black community. Right. So, right. so we need to understand that we are in a sorry state. And the reason why we are in a sorry state is because of the nature of the black leadership that we have and because of the black capitalists who are talking about saving us to keeping the dollar in the black community. You keep the dollar in the black community, what are you going to do with macro capitalism? Capitalism is still the, uh, the uh, raison d'etre for the whole economy. So, you know, all we're going to do, what, is we're going to make a few black folks rich. We're going to make them some money. You know, we're going to make the local car dealership you know, um, uh, so um, some money. He's not making any armored personnel carriers. I know he's not doing nothing to protect our asses. So yeah. what are we going to do with this? You know, keep the dollar in the black community. Bullshit. Right. right. And, you know. So uh, yeah. I think what we need to do now at this particular, we need to embark on a campaign between now and the 2024 election of purging ourselves of black misleadership. I think right. that we have to go after them. We have to disgrace them. We have to drag them from power, and we have to form our own independent political uh, um, uh, and, and social networks so that we could run our own candidates, so that we could begin to put on the referendum bills on the local uh, referendums that address our needs. We need to really, really wage war against the black misleadership class. These niggas right are out of control. You know, I want I want to add something real quick because oftentimes. Uh, you know, we need clarity and folks um, are not quite clear about what you mean when you talk about leadership by victimhood. I think that one of the things that that, that we forget, you know, in, in many cases, I think there's been uh, um, there's been a there's been situations where we've lost loved ones and you have people stand up speaking on behalf of those loved ones. But it's not a concrete analysis. It's not. It's not. Not. Uh, um, they're, they're speaking from emotion and pain, opposed to what the overall picture is about. But most. But but but, but, but most. But you, you know, I, I don't want to cut you off, Kalanji. But most of the victims of police murder are apolitical. They they right. they weren't activists in the movement. They weren't trying to liberate black folks, they were just living their lives and going about 
trying to struggle through the best as they could. And so their life was taken from them by these police and by these fascists. And, and the family is now thrust into the spotlight, you know, to explain this loss. And they can't explain it because they don't have an analysis. So who comes along? Crump, the Crumps come along. You know, this Negro ain't won a case since 1922. He comes along. You see, the Sharptons come along because they know that they look at the media, they see Crump talking on the media. Vultures. They, yeah, and so they say, well, let's, let's, we need a family lawyer. Let's call him, you see? And so they just, perpetrate, they just perpetrate the idea and the notion of victimhood, okay? It's one thing to understand that people who have lost their loved ones and, and have their children murdered, this is a deeply traumatic uh, experience for anybody. And I know how I would feel if I lost my children like this. So I, this is a deeply traumatic experience, but it doesn't mean that that qualifies me to, as 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 a, a to call the shots for a movement to talk about when we should demonstrate, how we should demonstrate, what manner of protests we should carry out. I mean, you had these folks come up right after their loved one is murdered, talking about let the prosecution run its course and just not burn down anything, and you're supposed to burn down everything. Anything that these crackers own, you're supposed to burn that shit down, okay? If they don't see it, burn it down. They're the ones just determining the parameters of the debate. Burn that shit down. Put some fire up on the Joy Reid's uh, uh, drawers and run a funky ass out of there, okay? We need to do these things. We need not follow the leadership of of people who have, suffered, who have suffered the loss of their child, the loss of their loved ones, and now they're thrust into the public pop spotlight. What are they, what are they supposed to say? Right. I mean, what analysis they're going to present, you see? Right. Maybe they might listen to a Farrakhan tape since the kid got killed, or they heard chopped and give a eulogy, so they come out and they mouth something that they heard there. They don't have no real deep analysis and no experience right. in the right. struggle. Right, so, because so, I, I think, and, and not to cut you, but I think in many cases, they don't realize it's war. And, and it, it's like what uh, you talked about in the past, you know, they didn't kill Mike Brown because his last name is Brown. They didn't kill uh george floyd because his last name was floyd this is war on us this is war on african and indigenous and other oppressed people around the planet and it's not a personal thing it's personal to us because it hit it, it hits home that's understandable but like you said just because of the fact that uh i'm i'm, I'm in pain don't mean that i'm the I'm, I'm the person to stand up and say that this is what should be done we have to have a historical analysis and understand who our enemy is. And I think that political education is so important because without political education, you'll be confused into believing that it's just about your situation. And that's not to take away from your situation because it again, because again, you know, hell yeah, it's going to hit home. But we need if, if, if you have a, uh, uh, a heart problem, you need a cardiologist. It, just because I have a doctor on the, uh, on, you know, in my title, you know, and, and I happen to be a dentist, it don't mean I mean I go in fucking with the heart. That's matters of the heart. That's something else to deal with, you know. So I think that that that's important for folks to understand because I I, I know that, you know, oftentimes and we just from working on the on, on on this side of the barricades, oftentimes we run into families that want to tell you how to call the shots no you can say how the name is represented we understand and respect that but a war is bigger than the individual absolutely you know we are at war and 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 and, and i think one a, a, a vivid illustration of that is is that when george floyd was being was being suffocated you know and this cracker was kneeling in his neck everybody was standing around yelling but nobody threw a brick at this cracker nobody threw a rock at him or, or, or anything, right. you know? Right. If he would, if, if they would have distracted him for a moment and he got off that man's neck, he might still be alive today. That's right. Okay. So we all accepted a cracker in our midst, strangling a black man to death. And all we I could do was, right. oh man, what are you doing? That's wrong, that's wrong. Nobody fire blasted that cracker. They wasn't expecting no snipers from the rooftops ambushing them, okay? One of the things you have to understand about about the uh, uh, about the auspices of the Black Liberation Army, that once once the once the, these, these these crackers understood that there would be retribution, that it was no such thing as as justice without retribution, they was rolling in the community four deep. 
in in a squad car standing with their back to the wall. Okay. Right. And they wasn't you, trying to pick no fight with nobody. Since, since you since you brought that up and 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 in, in honor of, of of blood, you know, you know, our, our our comrade who is no longer here physically. Um just real quick if, if you don't mind for, because I, I know that there are people who are unclear about um who the BLA was, what was the role of the BLA? Because I, I think that, you know, I, I often hear folks talk about how no one has ever responded or how, you know, we don't do this or we need that, so on and so forth. Please, in, in the best way without uh, <laughs> without giving away trade secrets, for lack of better words, you know. Well, you, you, you know what, Kalanji, the problem is, is that the journey of a thousand miles begins with one single step. And 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 when I was coming up, and 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 this is not to, to praise my generation or anything over and above everybody else, because every every generation did have those of us who came forward and picked up the gun to defend our people, to defend ourselves, to defend our humanity. So when I was younger, I felt it was my obligation to 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 make sure that those people who who felt that they could bully us, that they could beat us, and they can get away with it, that they had to pay a price, that there had to be retribution. Now, you have some folks that say, well, you believe that now? Why don't you get out there and do something? You know, my night vision ain't like it used to be, bro, and my reflexes ain't like it used to be, but I'll tell you something. You know, if, 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 if the situation was different, you know, them crackers would pay for this. And that's one of the things that I, when I said blood was always in the mix, you had comrades like Camus, Camus White, you had comrades like Twyman Myers, we had comrades that, that, that took that seriously, you know, and that you weren't going to, if there were going to be funerals, it wasn't going to be funerals on one side, it was going to be funerals on both sides. And that's the thing that, 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 that white supremacists and oppressors understand. That's the only thing that brings them to the negotiating table is when body bags start coming back home. When body bags start coming back home, then the sympathy and the empathy that the family of Breonna Taylor felt for the loss of their daughter, they feel it for the loss of their child. And then people start talking about, man, we can't keep on going like this. Let's come to some type of detente. Let's come to some type of settlement here, you know? And the settlement basically is you, you, you cannot kill me and kill my people with impunity. It will not happen happen. You could organize all the police you want. You could get all the firepower you want. But when it comes down to, to it, I call the shots. I call it when it happens, where it happens and when it and where it and, and, and how it happens. You know, so you could bring all that firepower to bear. You're going to have to occupy the community from block to block, street to street, 24 hours a day. Let's see how that works. Right. On. Hmm? Well, so, I, I know well, I'm getting you. I know I'm getting you ramped up. I don't want to go too far over in the other direction. <laughs> well, I, I am an advocate. I am an advocate of of of, of revolutionary justice. I believe yes. I believe the history has shown that oppressors and exploiters will not take their foot off your neck unless they have, unless they have to pay a consequence. Yes, chop that motherfucker off right on. Yep. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Hey, man. You know it's always. You know I I ain't get to kick it with you this weekend. You know what I'm saying. Uh, you be ducking I, I, me, man. I feel away. <laughs> he said I was ducking you. you be ducking me. That's, why that's why your hair is looking so slick, man. <laughs> you, Come on, man. Why you gonna do me you like getting that? Getting your broadcast persona together, man. You know, he colder than white, man. Man, I don't know why you want to do me that way. I mean, but, you, uh, you. I mean, you're gonna be. All you need is one of them Rolling Martin T-shirts, man. Hey, yo, man. Don't don't even mention his name, man. The, with with black and with I, you know, black, with black Lives Matter across the top of. Something, man. <laughs> Are you gonna do me like that now, right? That's how we do it. That's I'm cool, man. Saying, man. That's know, cool. <laughs> all, I mean, all the podcasters got to have a certain persona, man. You know, man. Listen, man. Hey, look. I ain't no damn podcaster. I use this as a tool. <laughs> okay. I mean, whatever. You know, I'm. I don't want to be judgmental. Hey, man. hey look, man. Hey, you don't. You don't want to be no academic. And I don't want to be no podcast. <laughs> so let's now, you know, now you see, now you're going to act like I'm anti Jared Ball or something. I'm not, <laughs> I'm not anti -academ academician, man. I just feel that academics have a role to play. And their role is to create revolutionaries, to create uh, 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 minds and, and, and creative forces that will revolutionary, that will revolutionize our condition and our position. No so doubt. academics are important. Education is important. You could see that. 
you can see how these, how, how, how these white folks are going into so-called cultural wars, talking about um, uh, uh, critical race theory and all of this stuff. They, they, they cannot face an analysis that, 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 that puts them in a position of understanding exactly who they are and what they did. And it's very, very important to understand what education is. Education is the, is the organizing and, uh, and, 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 and the development of people into the most, educating them into the values and the standards of the most powerful class in society. Right. That's the role of education. So if we have an educational system that that is not educating our, us into our our status, our situation, and how we need to get out of it, then the educational system is non-functional. It's not producing any any liberators. It's not producing any revolutionary thinkers, any any change makers. You know, we're depending on change coming from you know from hip hop artists and rap artists and and basketball players that they're supposed to be our leaders. Hey, I want I want to um I want to clear something up while you're on the line because I think there's some uh there there's some uh folks aren't clear about certain things. I want now I remember having you um uh, when when Jared Kamau and I had you on you and uh you blood and say cool on we talked about uh the difference between the BLA and the Black Panther Party. Now for clarity the BPP and the BLA were not the same thing, correct? And um and and let, let's talk about that real quick. I mean, I, I know we got to go, but just to, to clarify, because I don't want nobody putting nobody else's words in nothing. I know Blood said that every member of the BLA wasn't a part of the Black Panther Party. Can you clarify that or speak on that, or am I getting it wrong? Well, um, well, you, you, it, it's true. Every member of the BLA weren't necessarily in the Black Panther Party. The Black Panther Party was a was an above ground organization. It's, it, it started out as the Black Panther Party for Self Defense, founded by Huey P. Newton and Bobby Seale. And um, in 1966, in October, 66, in California, and, 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 and it grew into a national organization. And, and the Black Panther Party was at first open, had open membership. I mean, you could join, literally walk in, fill out a form, and join the Black Panther Party. This left it open to infiltration, of course, on a massive scale of provocateurs, ne'er-do-wells, people with psychological problems, all joined the Black Panther Party for various reasons, their own personal and political reasons. So the Black Panther Party at a point had to close its ranks, had to close membership. And that came around the time of the Panther 21 bust in um, April of 1969, I think. And um, and the ranks were closed to the Black Panther Party, and then the only people that could work out of the offices were what we call community workers, you know, and they had to work out of the office for a while. They had to be vetted, and they performed all of the functions of a Panther, but they weren't members. And um, but the Black Panther Party, because it was an above ground le uh, legal organization, its primary purpose was to act as a leadership. Uh, a, a group a leadership organization, what we call the Vanguard organization, to advocate for the self-defense and for the empowerment of black of the black community. And if you look at the ten point program and platform, the ten point program and platform in and of itself is not revolutionary. It's quite reformist. Right. What, but what 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 trans what made it different was point number seven, when we said that. Um, that the police occupied our community as an occupying force, and that and that um, that black people needed to control the public safety and police in our community, and that the only army that a black man should and should join is the Black Liberation Army. Okay, and so this was because the United States military has always been an imperial imperial force of white supremacy and uh, an extension of, of white violence internationally. So for black people to be members in this particular uh, organization, in this particular army, was antithetical to them, to their people, and to their, and to their own um, uh, existence as a, as a black person. But so when the Black Liberation Army um, emerged, it emerged to exact revolutionary justice. It, in fact, its first communique was signed, "Revolutionary Justice." Okay. 
and um, and this goes back to 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 the to the idea and the notion that we had a right to defend the integrity of our community, of our people, and that if you and that you were not supposed to come into our community and murder our children and murder our mothers and murder our grandmothers and think that you're going to get away with it, you're not going to get away with it. We'll hunt you down like a dog and slaughter you. Okay, and 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 they they understood that, okay, and and so those members who joined the uh, BLA or who became part of the BLA were mostly recruited while we were underground, in many right. respects, okay, and what a lot of people don't realize is that the BLA enjoyed the support of many folks in the black community, educated academicians, professionals. And so that's how the black underground was able to exist. It was able to exist because the black community embraced it, because the black community understood it, okay? And today we don't have an underground. We don't have an underground railroad. We don't have an underground anything, you see? We're completely dependent on, on the electoral um, uh, system to, to provide us with justice, to provide us with, with protection, and um, and that's 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 delusionary. That's that's a delusion. The system of white supremacy was never uh, developed to protect us or empower us. And until we understand that we're at war with this system, they will continue to murder us. They will continue to kill us with impunity. And 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 of course, if you are at war and you don't have your own um, armed agents, your own arms uh, armed activists, then you're at a distinct disadvantage. Hey man, definitely appreciate you coming on board. I know you got some other things to do. Um uh and 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 we as always you and the Jamu bring in the uh the, the the firepower, you know, and uh and, and the clarity, you know, and I'm sure that our, our folks out here uh in the chat appreciate your uh coming on board. Shout out to all the folks out there in the chat who uh keep us moving, continue to support what it is we're doing continue to support uh black power media support our political prisoners you know what i'm saying uh you know pray or fight for dr matulu shakur and and all political prisoners imam jamil alameen um mumia who we've you know had on this platform right here on right started tv a couple different times you know we we definitely support uh i mean appreciate your support appreciate all you who have been donating to um uh, to the platform with your super chats and and with uh, uh assisting us with um um our work through um patreon make sure you continue to support that and um you know write a political prisoner because i think that that's that's encouraging to for for brothers and sisters who have been behind the walls for for decades to hear the voice of of some of you to hear some of the uh, uh your words of encouragement but um Definitely, man. Daruba, appreciate you. Love you, brother. Um, I'll see you soon. And even though you try to diss my hair, I'm gonna let you slide on this one today. I mean, it just was a compliment, man. You hear the man. <laughs> Come on, man. I had to let my uh my 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 my, my cousin wanted to hook it up for me, so I just said well, the good go shout out. You did a good job. No doubt, no doubt. You did a good job, man. You yeah, know? yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. <laughs> and so I, call me a podcast. I got to go, man. I got, hey. I, I got to go. So I just want to thanks, thanks for uh, being on, uh, um, allowing me to be on the show and kick the willy with you, man. No doubt. And you know, uh, my shout out to Black Power Media and everybody on it. You know, I be watching it in Africa and and, and everywhere, man. So you know, let's keep keep it up. You know, we got to fight the power with it with information. Information is intelligence. No so doubt. y'all keep it up man. no doubt man oh yeah and an ftp movement 18 year anniversary is next week june 9th hopefully you bring the ruba back down you know what i'm saying hang out and uh with with, 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 with us uh what day is june 9th that, that's on a thursday man thursday hey, man, y'all, got, y'all got to move it to a weekend something everybody <laughs> could party man thursday that's what we gotta do we, people gotta work we, man we start thursday going through only you and Monday. only you and me man is living off the fat of the land <laughs> <laughs> you ain't get your pronouns right it might be you i don't know <laughs> i don't know about no you and me but definitely bro i appreciate you man we'll be talking to you in a few ticks okay and, uh, 
stay on point. I- no doubt. Been checking out Riot Starter TV with uh Jamu Baraka and Daruba Ben Wahad. You know, they wild like the Taliban. Hopefully they don't get us banned. But uh we appreciate you all continuing to support what it is we doing. Love y'all. Um man, check us out tomorrow morning, 8 a.m. to 10 a.m. on what is we talk? What are we talking about? There's too many R's around here. I'm about to say Riot Star TV. I'm about to say Renegade Culture. Remix morning show tomorrow. Check us out, 8 a.m. to 10 a.m. And do me a favor, share this piece right here, man, because uh, you know we're not doing this for sport. I took some time off of uh, of of the uh, uh, Riot Star TV joint because I felt like, man, you know maybe y'all tired of it. Y'all don't really want this information. Maybe you have it all already. You know what I'm saying? But um, if you want to continue to uh, see what we're doing here. Uh, please share share all of our work. But um, of course, here at Riot Started TV, my effort and my goal is to help provide some political education, help to provide an analysis, and bring on folks who did a lot of what we're attempting to do. You know what I'm saying? Um, at this stage in the game, I have grown children. So, you know, I know that, um, you know, for us to have these, these OGs on board and, and to assist us, you know, we we definitely uh, got to keep bringing this love. So anyway, y'all have a powerful day. And we'll talk to you soon, man. Stay on point. Checking out the Remix Morning Show. Peace. Be safe. Stay ready for revolution. Bang, bang. Thank you.